and make available. But, um, you know, and it's, I think it's even more than just um, once you've got your funds set up, what do you do with it, right? It's more than, than, the, than discussing the sales process, but I think we ought to go through that a little bit. But it's also knowing the actual logistics of how do you get somebody signed up into your fund? See, we have never talked about that. And, and that's pretty, pretty basic stuff. Um, yeah. And so My other we ought to dedicate, uh, dedicate a Tuesday night on how to do that. I mean, you know, we've talked a little bit about, you know, uh, do the pitch, get a soft commit letter. And I'm sure people understand that conceptually. We might have to role play that. We might have to actually pull the doc out, show people what it says, how to fill it out, what it looks mm -hmm. like. I mean, it's pretty straightforward and basic, but maybe some people need to see that. And well, then, and I think, you know, the marketing part of it is one, like how do I generate interest? Mm -hmm. And I know that Ben's kind of perfected that process. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other, so I thought about having him and also Stefan Mm -hmm. kind of address that uh, to the group. But then I think it's also, okay, like like you said, Mark, now I have my, I have the fund, I have this, now what's important? Like, what do I need to get people to now? sign? Right. And then my other question to Ben is, since we are a fund of funds, are we gonna have to collect the minimum or can we just start, sending him like the money comes in and it goes to Ben. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, For I do. For him to do his magic. Or so, are we going to have to accumulate funds and do the 1 million or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. You know, I think because we're a fund of funds in my brain, I'm thinking that the money that we get can go directly to Ben immediately. It doesn't have to sit and accumulate, but that's a right. question that I have. It, it depends on the, the fund itself or the structured product. So I can answer all those questions. Um, there's, and maybe we should spend some time tonight. I was going to talk about derivatives, but maybe we should talk about this because we're recording it and, uh, and we can put this up as a, as a quick archive for people to watch and, and get some answers. And so to your point, Jody, first of all, let's talk about the difference between marketing and sales, okay? Because they are different and they're different activities and they're things that Ben has already uh, made available to us, but we probably don't fully realize it. Um, for example, let's talk about marketing for just a second. Marketing is all about putting people in the in the sales funnel, in the hopper. Okay, my hands aren't showing up very well, but they're coming <laughs> to the sales funnel and they're now going through a, a marketing process, right? Um, and we can speak to that to a, a large degree. Um, let me make some general comments about marketing in general, and then we can bring it and steer it down to what we're doing specifically. Number one, you know, you and I, Jody, we've we've talked to Ignition Systems and they talk about building a sales funnel. Okay. Mm -hmm. What Ben has done is built a sales funnel. Uh, Frank Kern teaches us how to build a sales funnel. And Oren Claff has taught us how to build sales funnels. So what does that tell us? It tells us that our marketing technique and strategy needs to be to build a sales funnel, right? And we need to use the tools that have been given to us, and we need to probably identify and, and develop some other tools. So, for example, um, I know Ben uses Russell Brunson for the mechanics of his, his uh, sales funnels. He uses click funnels, mm -hmm. okay? And you may be familiar with that. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but you can go in there, and if you can... Um, mull around a little bit you can get click funnels for as low as 99 dollars a month well okay. and i have a thing that i'll probably introduce to the community that i've been working on it's kind of a whole system that replaces like click funnels and okay. i mean it basically takes everything and puts it right we down definitely want to see what you got we definitely mm -hmm. want to see what you got because the more we can develop a kind of a, a done for you marketing approach where um, maybe we've worked through things like 
um, you know, how to attract people into the funnel, you know, what, you know, as you, as you guys know, you know, a funnel to attract people, you need the ethical bribe, right? The thing to give you their email address, mm -hmm. you need to have uh, something of value to give in exchange for that. Um, typically that's an ebook, which I know we can get, you know, available. There's the, um, then the low cost lead, um, magnet, uh, which essentially is, is it's, it's designed to help pay for your marketing budget. Right. Um, and Ben gives us that Ben gives us that whole marketing tool, right? And that whole marketing tool is the, that marketing paper that he wrote in which he gives us a uh, financial associate link, he gives us a unique identifier and a link so that essentially we can lead with Adagio product, Adagio's book with the masterclass. That becomes our product that we can put out there with our unique uh, identifier and get paid to bring people into Adagio, okay? And so that's a great lead magnet. And, you know, we can start our sales funnel that way. We can literally build the front end of our sales funnel using Adagio. And that's what, it, that's what Ben's answer would be to the question, right? Now, if you've got the back end of the sales funnel available, then, you know, all we have to do is just connect the two, right? <laughs> ben has the front end. If you've got the back end, we're good to go. Right. And so we can we can use that to then qualify the person to to see if they'll they'll be interested in coming into our fund as an investor and so on and so forth. So, you know, there's some marketing tools there that I've briefly addressed and Ben has offered those. And, you know, we may need to build some more. So, Jody, if you've got something good, let's let's talk about it and see what we can do. And maybe we could even partner with Ben at that at that point and see if that's something that uh, he would be interested in in uh, furthering that and I have branding it as a you know or a white labeling it I suppose as a as a unique yeah. product. Yeah, hmm. I have someone coming into my office, Mark. I got to jump off here for a sec. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. You know, the next the next question that, that Jody was um, addressing uh, dealt with the difference between marketing and sales. And so, you know, essentially what I've just described with the sales funnel um, is really the marketing aspect of this. And Toby, if you've got some insights there, I know you know sales funnels really well. Um, feel free to jump in there and expand on that discussion or ask some leading questions or something and we'll we'll talk about that, but yeah, everybody's going to need to develop a marketing approach to marketing their fund. Now, the cool thing is, is if we go with the 506A, you can lead with an educational product, again, which is an Adagio branded product. We can start with the master class. We can start with the book and so forth. And then, of course, follow up and, and tantalize people with the uh, AIP program, which is now available for free in the back office, if you didn't know. No, um, no. In, what's that? No, I didn't know that. You didn't know no. that? Yeah, that program that, you know, year and a half ago, Ben was selling for $7,000. Mm -hmm. In the old book, it was talking about selling it for seven grand. It's now in the back office for free. He's oh, given nice. it to us. And so I'm actually taking it right now. The other thing that he put in the back office for free, <laughs> so there's a lot of value that's been brought in, a particular educational value, is he's put a Series 65 review course in there for free, which means if you go through and you take that Series 65 review course, you could go sit for your Series 65 license and, and, and presumably pass it, right? Yeah. And so... I think you become an accredited investor once you have that. You, you become a registered investment advisor. Right, but you, you become also... Your, you, become, you become the RIA, right? Right, but it's also a backdoor to becoming an, an accredited investor. So you can invest money without having to make millions, you know, have a million dollars in the bank. Really? Can you enlighten me? <laughs> That's new to me. Yeah, so, so I think as long as you have that, you can, you know, the supposedly being an accredited investor is to protect the little guy 
Mm -hmm. And so if you're a Series 65 license, you're now considered an accredited investor? You're, yeah, you, you, you should know what you're doing at that point. And I think that's the way the SEC looks at it. Okay, everybody who's listening to this, take note. <laughs> um, that's, that's good to know. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, you, your, your ability to charge fees, your ability to work with 506 Bs and Cs now, you know, expands. There's all kinds of things that all, all kinds of doors that open to you when, when you've got your Series 65. And not only that, but Ben is incentivizing us to um, get that AIP certification and, and, and uh, in particular, and, and possibly also getting the Series 65 by working with us to create a proof of funds statement for when we launch our fund. How would you like, and again, I don't know how this works. I don't know how it works in terms of a legal document standpoint. Um, Ben can explain this in a lot greater detail, but I'll just tell you, he's saying that if you set up your fund and if you're AIP certified, uh, you know, and you get that certification, he will provide a proof of funds statement for up to $5 million for your fund. So essentially, you're able to compliantly represent to potential investors that you've raised $5 million. So, you know, I, I'm assuming, based on my limited understanding of this, and I'll have to, to learn some more, but I'm assuming at that point that, you know, that's supposed to get us over the hurdle in the eyes of our investors that, you know, they're the first one to jump, you know, which is also, you know, very hard for some investors to do. And so if we, if we continue this education that's been offered for free, um, there's some other benefits that are coming that we need to learn about. And so uh, to everyone within the sound of my voice, I encourage you to go back into that classroom and jump into that AIP course particularly. And if you're inclined to see if you can get licensed in your Series 65, jump into that as well. Get those done and include that with the setup of your fund. Okay. And you'll learn a lot more about you know, how funds are set up and run, obviously. So we were talking about marketing. Uh, Jody brought the question up of sales. And I, and I mentioned that marketing and sales are different. So marketing is attracting people to you. Mm -hmm. Marketing is taking them through the sales funnel process. Um, the sales itself is the process to close. And mm -hmm. I know Ben has used that term. And so I'll use that term here as well, to close people. So essentially, if you have a sales funnel that does a couple of things, number one, it increases interest in your fund. So you've got, you've offered educational products that presumably is helping you pay for the cost of that, generating that lead, right? And we will talk about lead magnets and that kind of thing if you, if you have some questions there or Toby, if you want to expand on that. You've got some qualifying that needs to happen. And so somehow through your, um, uh, sales funnel process. Let, now let's let's take a step back for a second. If you're doing a 506A, you don't necessarily have to qualify them because a 506A will take both non-accredited and accredited investors. Okay, so you don't have to qualify them and, and prove that they're accredited. If you're doing a 506B, which I don't Ben does not recommend that any of you do a 506B out of the chute, then you're going to have to qualify them. They're going to, they're going to be fi filling out a, a questionnaire that you provide to them within this sales funnel qualification process. They'll fill out the questionnaire, send it in, and you're supposed to determine if they self-identify, to use that phrase, as a, an accredited investor. And under the rules of 506B, um, you know, you if they identify as an accredited investor, great. If they don't, then you can go ahead and, and accept them, but you're going to be limited as to how many uh, unaccredited investors you can take on, okay? I believe the number is 100 now, but that's still going to be very limiting. Uh, the other thing under 506B is it's going to be pretty tough to have a sales funnel because you can't do general solicitation. And so there's some other restrictions on it. So quite frankly, this probably doesn't apply in a 506B 
situation. Uh, but it would apply definitely in a 506A and it could apply in a 506C. Now the case of the 506C is that all, 100% of all your investors have to be accredited. If they're not accredited, you can't take their money, period. But because of that rule, you're able to now do some general solicitation, which means you could have a great sales file, right? But in the case of a 506C, you're also expected to go through um, a higher threshold of compliance, uh, particularly as it relates to qualifying somebody as an accredited investor. Um, you've got to do a little bit of due diligence on the person. You may have to seek uh, some substantial, excuse me, substantive uh, documentation of their accredited status, right? So if they claim they have a, a home, um, uh, or asset, excuse me, if they have assets greater than a million dollars, not including their home, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm mm -hmm. kind of foggy brain tonight. Um, then, you know, you may have to find out a little bit about those assets and, and, and verify that they in fact are worth, you know, more than the million dollars. Let's say they have a, a trading account or something like that. You might need to look at a trading account balance or bank balances or something like that. You might have to look at some tax returns to verify their income, something yeah. like that. And you can and outs so outsource that to a third you party. You can outsource you that. I'm necessarily have glad to you bring that up. Yes. There are uh, third party service providers who do just that. They will, for a fee, of course, um, take the information down on a, a per, an accredited investor who wants to invest in your fund. And then they will work with that individual to verify that they are indeed accredited. And then when they, that third party comes back and says they are or they ain't, then that's considered your doing a, your due diligence to, to make sure that they're accredited. So when you get into the 506C, because they absolutely do not allow for any unaccredited, um, you typically take them through that qualify, qualification process before you take their money. So if they sign all the paperwork, they fill out the questionnaire um, you know, to, for accreditation, you take all that in, you probably have them put the money that they would otherwise invest into an escrow account, and then once they have um, uh, completed the substantiation process as an accredited investor and compliantly done so, then you know, arrangements are made to release that escrow to your fund. And of course, if they come back and they don't qualify as a, as a qualified investor, then you release those escrow funds back to them and say, sorry, we can't take your money, right? And so, um, there's a process there that you'll probably build into your sales funnel. And so one of those things in the process will be at some point, you know, we've talked about the soft commits, so we'll not talk about that, but at some point you'll issue them an investor suitability questionnaire, if that's appropriate. And it's something you can do electronically through this process. You can set all this up to be automated, right? Uh, another thing you can do to, and set up to be automated, an automated part of your marketing process is an email drip campaign, if you're familiar with that, and, and with uh, email autoresponders. Um, if you've ever been marketed to through your email account, and most of us have, you'll recognize that, uh, you know, if you give somebody your email address, you'll get um, frequently an email maybe every day or every other day or every few days from that person. And the whole objective is to send you an email drip by drip by drip until you ultimately uh, buy their product, whatever it may be. And you probably noticed that, that, that you've done that in the past. And so your marketing campaign would be set up with uh, email drip campaigns and, and all, all those autoresponders and so forth. And so, um, I know Ben has some of that. If, if you give him your email address or, you know, if you have advertised for one of Ben's products, uh, educational products, I should emphasize, and you give him your email address, then if you haven't seen this, try it. 
go in there and, and sign up for what, his book again and use a different email address or something and then watch his drip campaign come down and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, we have that already done for us because that's part of the front end of our marketing. Uh, as Jody is talking about, we need to build a back end, which takes us more through the qualifying process and to the point where people are now ready to actually submit uh, their application to invest, their investor suitability questionnaire and so forth. With that investor suitability questionnaire that you would send to them, now this is part of the sales process. I'm migrating from marketing now over to sales. And again, you can automate a lot of this. Um, you would send them a copy of the subscription agreement. You'd send them a copy of the PPM, of course. Um, I've got to confirm if you need to send them a copy of the operating agreement, although it's not there for them to sign, but you know, make, maybe you make that available online so that they can read it. You know, I don't know that they necessarily have to have it, um, but you want to make it readily available to them so that they can read it. Uh, so, you know, those are the things that um, you would do to set up your marketing and your sales process. And I know that we haven't spent a lot of time talking about that up until tonight. So I will, like I said, put this recording up. I'll put lots of arrows and things, you know, pointing to it to say, come listen to this to get an introduction to the marketing and sales process for your fun. Um, the key then at that point is, you know, taking a step back to the marketing side of this. How do you attract uh, people interested in investing in your fund? And I'm, I'm underscoring the word attract, right? Because we don't spam anybody. Um, you don't, uh, in some cases, you don't want to do, um, you know, blatant advertising or things like that, but you can attract people if done compliantly and done in a, in a good way. And so what is some of that? What are, what are some of those methodologies? And some of you guys might have some ideas here and feel free to jump in and add to them. But, you know, it, it's all about learning attraction marketing. I'll, I'll start with that. Okay. Uh, I don't need to rehearse, you know, the things you do for attraction marketing, uh, but I am going to coach people to go out and learn about attraction marketing. It involves how you present yourself in social media. Um, it involves how you present yourself in whatever community you're in. Um, some people will go out and look for communities that they can join. Uh, and again, attraction marketing is all about how do I present myself in this community in a way that people will want to find out what it is I have. They'll want to find out about the education that I offer. They'll want to find about, out about the investment opportunity and so forth. And, you know, when you get out there, you'll, you'll learn very quickly that when you get into some of these communities, and I'm talking about like LinkedIn or Facebook, um, there's some others that I can talk about, but those are probably the big two. Um, you know, you'll find that there are people out there that are very spammy. You know, you're, you're meeting professionals and, and they lead with, can I tell you about what I do? Can I tell you about my product? Can I tell you about, you know, fill in the blank? And, you know, they're not leading with an attraction marketing based approach. And you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, and it's the ones that you kind of go, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, that's your reaction. So if that's your reaction, then, then you know the difference. Um, so go study attraction marketing. Uh, going back, I'm jumping back and forth a lot because I'm just kind of in my mind remembering different pieces and parts of this. But um, your legal docs are a big part of the closing process. And so once they've filled out their investor suitability questionnaire, once you've determined that they're accredited or compliant as an investor, then you know you can give them the rest of the legal docs if they haven't got them by that point in time. Sign the the investor suitability. Well, they've already signed the investor suitability questionnaire. Sign the subscription agreement. Sign the PPM. Those are the two documents that they need to sign. 
um, you know, you will have probably set up somewhere in the process, whether it's automated or uh, not, where they have submitted the amount that they want to invest probably in some kind of holding account. Um, I like the idea of an escrow account. So maybe you have a, a bank account set up that acts as an escrow account, but it goes in there and essentially nobody touches that money until they've been cleared as an investor. You can also use that process to do what's called a um, capital call. So let's suppose, and this brings me up to the next question Jody had, uh, but let's suppose that in order to um, invest in one of Adagio's structured products, let's say that particular structured product requires a million dollars as an opening minimum amount, right? So, and, and you're now just getting started, so you don't have a million dollars yet, okay? Well, what you do is you go ahead and you put people's money in these holding accounts, in, in this escrow account, and you basically say, it's going to sit there until we reach the minimum that we need to deploy your money. And so it sits there until you've actually got a million dollars waiting to come into your fund. Then once you've got the million dollars to come into your fund, now you can bring that in and deploy it with Adagio. And so... Um, you can use that technique for, for capital calls for that purpose. Uh, if you've got an investment that you want to do that requires more than that, you can do it for more than that. If you've got an investment that requires less than that, that's okay too. just depends on you know, how much people are investing in your fund and what you need to take that next step. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, Jody uh, asked the question with respect to Adagio specifically, um, whether you can just take that money in and turn it right over to Adagio. And I'm going to suggest that you can't, okay? Because Adagio isn't in the, in the business of taking our money. Uh, they pass it through. And if you remember that diagram, we've used it in our presentations many, many times, but it's you know, on the, on the right-hand side, you see your fund and you're bringing in investors and your fund is colored in orange. Maybe Toby, you can find it and put it up there or something or let me know when you found it and I'll let you share the screen. And then there are buy sell opportunities within Adagio. And then on the left side of the Adagio bank, there are aquamarine aqua blue funds that, that are receiving funds, right? So there's funds that are bringing money in and then there's funds that are receiving money, okay? Um, and so if you can remember that diagram, basically uh, what that means is that Adagio is <clears throat> mostly in the business of engineering financial products. That's really what Adagio uh, gets paid to do is to engineer these financial products and the financial products that they're engineering are uh, for and on behalf of these aquamarine blue funds over here right but you've got to have a certain amount of money to pay adagio to be able to have them structure a unique product just for you okay i don't know what that is that probably varies uh, depend on depending on Ben's level of interest and time and other factors, right? So what does that mean when you're coming in from the beginning? Here you have this orange fund on the left of the schematic, or excuse me, on the right of the schematic, and you're bringing in investors, okay? There, number one, you want to be able to invest in Adagio structured products, number one. Okay, and I have seen Adagio structured products available for as little as $50,000 and for as much as a million or more. Okay, and different points in between. Okay, so as you're bringing in uh, money into your fund, could you take that first $50,000 and put it into an Adagio structured product? Yes, you could. Okay, how much of that do you want to put into that particular product is up to you and your asset allocation 
policies and practices, right? And compliance with other limitations according to the SEC rules. Um, you found it. Let me get. Let me uh, let you share the screen, and I'll um, and you can put it up there. So, uh, and you've got that share screen capability now. And so, um, you know, if you there it is. Okay. So, um, as you're raising money there on the right. In the orange section, that's your fund when you're starting out. So if you want to put fifty thousand dollars into an audio, uh, an adagio structured product, go right ahead. However, if you're starting out and you want to put a million dollars into a different adagio structured product, you're kind of stuck. Okay, which means then that you've got to accumulate a million dollars and do a capital call before you can put the million dollars into the Adagio fund. In other words, if you had $1, Adagio isn't gonna let you take that dollar and put it into a structured product that takes a minimum opening balance of a million, right? Not gonna happen. They expect you to come with the million, okay? And by the way, that structured product isn't Adagio's. Remember, they're just engineering structured products there in that dark blue investment bank box there, you see. What they're doing is they're structuring products for that aquamarine or that blue gray bank on the uh, or fund on the side. Okay. And when Ben has gone out and presented different structured products, it's been for and on behalf of one of those funds that is now offering a product that Adagio engineered and designed. Okay. So, um, you know, this is where we get our structured products that we talk about, and they're all different funds. Okay, so that's what Adagio is in the business of doing: designing and engineering structured products for some of these funds that are prepared to take those on. Okay, and there's a cost to that. Okay, so you won't be in a position necessarily to start that process and i know ben has kind of kicked around the number of 15 million million so about the time you've raised 15 million for your fund you're now probably going to be transitioning from orange status over to the blue gray status i thought that was aquamarine blue but it's a more of a blue gray um and and then you're in a position to have him designing products for you and then he's pitching those same products to other orange funds. And that's how Adagio raises money for you, but you're gonna have to qualify for that. You know, you're gonna have to probably raise $15 million first, okay? But in the meantime, you've got all these structured products that they've designed for other funds over here, and you can put money into those and be, begin growing your fund and getting those phenomenal returns, even with lower dollar amounts. So I hope that I hope that makes sense to more or less how this schematic works. So just starting out, you and me, we'll be on the orange side. Our job is to go find investors. Our job is then to find uh, structured products that Adagio has designed that will allow us to put our investors' money to work for us, right? And again, it varies between say something as small as fifty thousand dollars maybe something more in line with a quarter of a million or a half a million or even a million or more, okay? It just depends on what that fund over there on the left-hand side has done and worked out with Adagio as far as um, attracting investor monies from our fund of funds, right? And that's why you wanna have a fund of funds because what it does, is it allows you to compliantly buy Adagio structured products and all Adagio is doing is funneling the money back and forth between the funds there, as you see the buy side and the sell side, okay? I hope that makes some sense. Toby, am I missing anything? Do you have any questions maybe that I haven't addressed there? Nope, that was probably one of the best explanations I've seen. Okay, all right. Um, so I guess if anybody else has any questions about this, once you see this, uh, 
video in the community, then feel free to ask questions in the comments and we'll respond as best we can, or we'll make a video directing it at you and, and try to answer your question that way. Uh, okay, so we've talked about marketing. We've talked about the sales funnel and the sales process. We've talked about uh, buying in uh, different funds of uh, Adagio structured products. Um, I think I've pretty much addressed the bulk of what Jody shot out there as an initial rapid fire question <laughs> in the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, those are the, the, the key takeaways. I'll just, I'll just repeat. And then if there are any questions, uh, Brandon or Toby, you can, you can jump in and, and ask some clarifying questions. But once again, there's a difference between marketing and selling. Uh, the marketing is a way of attracting and using attraction marketing techniques and other uh, appropriate techniques, legally compliant techniques to attract people to your fund. Um, Ben has created an upfront uh, uh, attraction marketing model that if you go and study that paper, uh, I believe it's also in the classroom. I've also posted it in the community in months past, so you can go find it in either place. Sign yourself up as a financial associate. Okay, By signing up as a financial so associate, you now can get paid a commission for everybody that you send into Adagio who buys the master class or, and or the book, okay? And what that does is it creates a lead magnet to use the sales funnel jargon. It creates a lead magnet that allows you to get paid for generating a lead. And presumably it, it's not designed to get you rich because we're talking about some very low end products here. Um, you know, most people are spending 99 bucks or 150 bucks, you know, and if you're getting, I don't remember 50%, 75%. I don't remember what you're getting in terms of permission, but you're getting anywhere from 50, 50 to 100 bucks, maybe. Okay. So it's not a lot of money, but um, it's designed to pay for your marketing efforts. If you're marketing and you're generating leads and they're going in and buying this product, then you're getting paid for that. Right. And, um, and so it's designed to basically create a self-liquidating marketing effort, okay? And that way you take that money and you don't go spend it on pizza, but you take that money and you expand your marketing effort. You spend it on more marketing, okay? Um, so Ben has given us that front end. That's a gift. He's given that to us. And everybody should be using that. Now, can you go create your own? Absolutely. Go create your own. But, you know, why reinvent a wheel <laughs> when one's already been invented for you, right? Just take advantage of it. Work with Adagio to make it work to your best advantage. Admittedly, and I think Jody made this point very well, that the back end of the marketing process needs a little more work. Okay, now this isn't the fault of Adagio. Adagio doesn't have to do everything for us. But if we can come up with kind of a done for you sales process, then that's something else that we could add to that front end that then would help you uh, find investors according to that schematic. If you remember the investors were out off to the side and you're trying to find investors for your fund. So, you know, those are some things that we're working on. Those are some things that you can be working on. Uh, and I'm sure that if anybody has some good ideas, comments, suggestions, uh, want to help, I I'm sure we can come up with something there that will um, just make it that much better for everybody. So we've talked in the past about how to set up the fund. So tonight we've talked about how to set up some marketing. And, and how to use the Adagio uh, method. Um, and again, I'll, I'll see if I can put some links in there in the community or just go to the classroom and find the, that marketing document. In that document, in that marketing document is the link to become a financial associate with Adagio. And that's so you can get paid a commission for uh, promoting the educational products that Adagio has, okay? 
that's the beginning, particularly if you're going to do a 506A, okay? 506A requires you to be an educator and to be uh, offering an educational product as a way of bringing people into your fund. And this is the perfect way to do it. Offer the master class and say, this is a requirement for our investors. Okay. So there you go. There's the, there's the marketing process. The sales process involves how you interact with the investor and yeah. roll out your investor suitability questionnaire in that process, then get them the sales uh, subscription agreement, I mean, and the PPM. Make sure that they've reviewed those in a compliant way, sign off on those in a compliant way, put their money into a holding account, presumably escrow. I like escrow because it's managed by a third party, right? And you've signed an escrow agreement. And there's probably another document that would require us to create that. Ben might have another way of doing it that's compliant. We can certainly talk about that and, and get some more education there. Um, but that gets you to the point where you're now ready to take this money into the fund. Um, again, if, if people are waiting for you to have all of this answered, all of these questions answered, all of this worked out before even so much as putting together your pitch, then you're, then you're waiting too long. You know, I'm going to, I'm just going to state this for the record one more time, get your pitch done. <laughs> right. Don't worry about what needs to come next. Just get a pitch done. Um, you've seen the pitches that we've presented. You know they don't have to be pretty. Um, and, and so, you know, just get that done. And then as you move through the process, once you've got the pitch done, we'll work with you to go to your next step. And then we'll work with you to go to the step after that. If you feel you have to have all the steps mapped out and understand them 100% up front before you take step one, you're doing it wrong, okay? Um, I'm gonna quote, uh, I think it was Martin Luther King, and I'm not gonna quote him because I'm gonna misquote him if I try. But, uh, you know, he talked about, you know, climbing a stairway in the dark, you know, and it's one step at a time, number one, and the step will only illuminate as you're stepping on it, okay? Which means you're not gonna see the whole stairway. You're not gonna see it all at once. Each step will illuminate as you take the step. And so my motivational pitch tonight is get your pitch done. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it out to this group, let us help you get it finished, and then we'll work on the next steps, okay? Um, I got to tell you, you know, as I've mentioned in past meetings, and I'll mention it for the recording, Ben made available for us the legal documents. They're worth probably a hundred thousand dollars or more. Um, I, you know, I can't say how Ben will work with you in your fund, but I can tell you this much: you'll not see those documents from him until <laughs> he thinks you're ready for them. And so you're not going to get them. You're not going to see them until you've got a pitch done that you've that you've shown to people that you've refined that makes makes everyone convinced that you know what you want to do, right? What you want to accomplish with that pitch, and then it'll be time for your legal docs. And then if you're ready, Ben might make those available to you. Okay, so you don't have to go out and spend hundred thousand dollars for your legal docs. This is something really big because as we've talked about other groups, and I'll just drop the name here in this one since we already have, but you know, if you went over to Bridger Pennington and paid $35,000 for his black card service, pay him $35,000, he will get you some legal docs, which he will generously sell to you for about another seven. Okay. So you know, you've got to really appreciate that in this community, things are being made available to you for very, very inexpensive. You can't get them anywhere else. The quality of what you're getting, you can't get anywhere else. And so I'm going to challenge you once again, reciprocate for all the generosity that Ben has given you. Reciprocate by taking that step and getting your pitch done. You know, that's all he's asking. 
is do your pitch. Show him that you want what he's offering. And, and I'll tell you what, it'll open huge doors for you. Um, anything you want to add, Toby or Jody? Or Frenchie? Hi, Frenchie. <laughs> Sorry, I had someone walk in my office. Oh, no problem. So I went through this and answered all your questions. <laughs> watch, watch the replay. <laughs> yep. Hey, Mark, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you missed out on, on any, her question and any of the answers that I offered, then uh, go back. I'll have this posted by tomorrow, I promise. I'll have this one up and going on the community so that everybody can watch it. Excellent, because I came in late, so I missed it. That's good. You'll, yeah, you'll, good you'll get it. What's up, Jody? Hey, Frenchie, how are you? All right. What did I miss? I must have missed something major then. Is that what you, happened? You, you did. Sales uh, versus marketing. Uh, yeah. I'll so just Jody summarize. Asked some questions. She wanted to know about the difference between sales and marketing, or at least that's how I interpreted the essence of her question. Talked about the tools that are available. We talked about the structure, once again, of the relationship with Adagio in terms of how we buy structured products. Uh, and we talked about um, how to close a sale. Uh, let's see, what else did we talk about? There was another part, Jody, to that question, and I answered that too. I don't remember. You're just going to have Frenchy, to go back. Frenchy, it, all, it all stemmed from basically what we talked about last week, and I felt like there was kind of an overwhelming um, consensus with in our discussion of people kind of wanting to know, okay, great, I have a fund, but how do I get people? <laughs> Oh, how yeah. do I get yeah how do right. yeah yeah and so I just kind of mentioned to Mark hey maybe you know Ben also though has strategies related to like Facebook and um you know there's all those different types of strategies that's in as that well. marketing that, yeah and that's in that marketing white paper that I referred to several times in the discussion tonight it, yeah. it I believe it's in the classroom and I also believe that I, I know that I've put it up, I think, twice in the community over the last several months. So right. go look through previous posts in the community if that's the easiest way to find it or go to the classroom. Okay. Is there find a list? Is there a document group. file in the classroom where you posted it? Is it uh, in the file community or? is where I posted it, which is I posted a link to it so that if you click on the link, it'll take you right to that document. Okay. Uh, well, we have to go to your like you. we have to go to your particular. That particular no, it's community. in the Adagio school community there. Yeah, I know. But I was trying to see, was there a certain place where the, you can like get all the links? You know what I mean? No, yeah, I don't no. think so. Like on, no, like on Facebook. The, yeah, go to the classroom on school yeah. and it has all the links that Ben has posted. Some of those are repetitive to some of the links that I've posted. I've posted some links or provided some documents and things that uh, Adagio doesn't. So, right. Uh, but I've put them all in the community. So you just have to go down, scroll through the community, through all those past posts, and see if you can find it. Okay. Um, that's why. It, that's why I was. Yeah, at. his his marketing document is not in the classroom, Mark. That oh, I am not? seeing. Okay. okay. All right. But I think we can just search on you, right? Can't yep. we just search on me? Search on me in the community, and you'll find the document. Do you remember what it's called? I found it. Um, Marketing you overview. It. You found Marketing. it, Toby? You got the ability to share your screen. Go ahead and share the screen and show them the document. If you see a link, show them the link, too. Oh, if you got the link, you post it in the chat like you usually do, Toby. I got it. So anyway, there's, there's a document there that explains uh, quite a few methodologies that Ben is recommending for um, generating um, potential interest in your fund, okay? And so, and that's that document also, there you go. Can you blow that up a little bit? Um, yeah, the Adagio right. Marketing Overview, yep. Mark, I'd totally forgotten about this. Okay. Excellent. And, and as I've mentioned a couple of mm -hmm. times already, I'll mention it again, just for, for Frenchie's benefit, there's a link in there that you click on that, in fact, there's a ton of bunch of links that you can click on and learn more, obviously. There's, I mean, he gives you the whole structure right there, okay? 
And one of the links that you can click on is to become a financial associate of Adagio. Okay, and by coming, becoming a financial associate, you now can promote Adagio's educational products and you get paid a commission for doing so. Okay, so when people buy the masterclass through your marketing efforts, you get paid a commission. If people buy the book through your marketing efforts, you get paid a commission. Now, again, these commissions, as I've said before, are not designed to make you rich. But what they are designed to do is get you enough money that it will pay for your marketing costs. It's called a liquidating marketing budget. Liquidated marketing budget, I guess, is the best way to say that. Oh, okay. And so if you're promoting the educational material, which, by the way, if you're a 506A, you need to do anyway, you're getting paid to do that, okay? And then once people come in, of course, and they're your person, then, you know, at some point, you'll be inviting them through the, your marketing process, your sales funnel, to consider investing in your fund. And that, that link is inside this document, you say? Yeah, or? let's see. Uh, Toby okay. scrolling down. There you go. Financial Advisor Associate, right there. That link, right there. Excellent. You sign up. You fill out a little form for Ben. He will assign you a... Uh, an affiliate number and a link that you then use that when you click on it, it goes into Ben's front end marketing funnel, sales funnel, but it, it's with your identifier so that you get credit for that person coming in. Okay. The other thing that Ben puts into this, which is absolutely amazing, is the entire structure of a marketing sales funnel. And so if you go through and study that, you'll know exactly how to set up your own sales funnel. Okay, whether you're doing it with click funnels or whether you're doing it with something else. Okay. One of the I, things that we need to do, Jody, is probably study that a little more closely and determine mm -hmm. whether the system that you think might work is actually compliantly following something like what he's got. And if it checks all the boxes, then that just means it's going to be that much better. And it, and it becomes kind of a done for you solution that maybe, you know, maybe working with Adagio, you know, we can market. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's crazy because I was, that's what I was doing this weekend. And actually I went through uh, chat GTP, uh, GTP and came out and got my marketing and sales funnel because I have active campaign. Okay. And it gave me a, a, a guideline and then some links. And I did some research on that. So that, that's like perfect timing as well that you're mm -hmm. talking about it right now. Yeah. So this is a great document. Um, go get it and, um, and study that. Okay. Because for those of you who now have set up a fund, this is your next step. It's about marketing yourself and marketing your fund so that people will want <laughs> to invest in in your fund and so this is the this is the technique yeah and and that was that was brandon brandon was asking that last week okay mm -hmm. you can go get involved in different professional groups you can get involved in ria groups or something like that investor groups you know you can go out there and do all of those kind of uh attraction marketing techniques right and do that but there's a still a process that you're going to design to to get your fund ready to receive the money that it's going to receive. So, right. I mean, the main thing that they always I always go through because I also have I bought a marketing package from Grant Cardone, and he has a very laid out marketing and closing sales package which i got for like 500 dollars or something yeah i mean that's you're exactly right frenchy and and everybody that's going to set up a fund is going to have to set up some kind of marketing and sales funnel and process to steer their investors through that process until you know until you're taking the check right and right. so you know, if if this is new, if this concept is new, this is the other half of the process that we haven't really gotten to yet. If this is new, then you're going to need to start studying these these marketing and sales concepts because a lot of it can be automated. Uh, I'll just say, and I've mentioned this in previous uh, meetings, 
But one of the keys to kick off the automation of your, your marketing and sales process is automate your presentation. Okay, now I'm surprised at how many people are not familiar with this, right? But how many times have you gone to a quote webinar or a sales presentation and seen it and it's fully automated? You know, um, in fact, <laughs> that's what Ben has, right? And of course, as a financial uh, associate, you have access to that evergreen presentation from an educational standpoint. And so what it means is, is that when somebody says, hey, tell me about your fun, you can say, yeah, no problem. Click on the link below. And they click on the link and there's an automated presentation, you know, with your voice, your graphics, all of, the, all of your stuff is all automated. So you don't have to be there every single time to give your presentation. If you're messing around with Calendly to give a presentation, you're working too hard. Okay, automate the process. And then once they've come through your sales funnel, gotten the education, come through, qualified as an investor, and now ready that they're ready to close, now talk to them live. Now put them on your Calendly and talk to them because you're collecting a check, right? But you're not starting out with them that way. You know, be, you know, be smarter and work not so hard. <laughs> Work smart, not hard. Yep. yep, there you go. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And actually, I'm <clears throat> through the program, the MBA program I'm going through right now. That's there. That's that you. You pretty much said the same thing he was saying. Audit. He, or he automates everything. Everything is automated. Yeah. You said it. Comes By the way, you you reminded me of something. I don't know if you guys know or not, but uh, I'm working on my master's degree. I just started my thesis for Capstone this week. So I'm in the last home stretch. I hopefully oh, right. be done in about four weeks. Oh, okay. Well, that's oh, why I was saying congratulations. I thought you were done. Oh, no, okay. no, no, I'm, I've, I've just finished all the classwork, you know, all the book reading and all that kind of stuff. And now I'm finalizing okay. the, the, the final Capstone project. Excellent. What, what some people know as a thesis, but it's, mm -hmm. it's called a Capstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Yeah, that's what it's called. Anyway, so I I'm excited because this is the this is the home stretch. Yeah, what's your what's your thesis on? Um, I'm actually putting together a training course for corporate America that will focus on how to train managers to do servant leadership management style, and how to train uh, servant leaders to uh, promote ethics. Okay. Wow. So it's all it's all about uh, it's all about really ethical leadership. Jesus as the CEO. Jesus as the CEO. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that book, right? <laughs> I've heard of the book. I've not read it, but I yeah. but I've heard I, of it. Yeah, I haven't read it yet, but I I saw my list. Yeah. But yeah, that's it's that. Concept. I have that one. Do you, you really? Like okay. I started reading it. Oh yeah. How do you Did like? You it? like it? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. I've got a couple other books that I've got on my reading list after I finish the program, which focus on, you know, Jesus, Jesus as the uh, ultimate servant leader. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but I have, I've read a few books, but I've been mostly reading research articles right now that do a lot of statistical research and, and they're trying to, you know, uh, quantify and, and substantiate how servant leadership in this case or ethics ethical leadership actually results in you know more productive employees better bottom line you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing so i'm i'm looking at it purely from a, a quantitative finance point of view <laughs> sure sure yeah okay yeah i know uh, jody was asking me about that last week too and um Jody, you should get in that program that I mentioned to you before because they have they have a he has a segment in there which is a a VC boot camp which is I haven't looked at it yet because I'm just started the class really like this month the beginning of this month but he has a section there because I went and asked him a question I said well does your course include um, quantitative analysis in regards to 
beta testing and all that. And he went through a whole thing. He said, we don't, and I said, risk analysis. He said, well, I don't get into, too, I don't get into risk analysis, but I do have the virtual boot camp because he worked on, he worked, he was on the board for Citadel. He worked with um, Teal and he, you know, he's from, got his degree from Columbia and then taught at Stanford. So, but he, he mentioned all that. He said he knows all about it and he got into the CPM. He said he does talk about that in beta. Um, but in regards to fully, because when you get into risk analysis, that's like a whole segment of it by itself, I believe. But he said he does get into it, into it a little bit. But he does get into quantitative analysis. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. So does anybody have any other questions or comments what about program what is this, Frenchie? Um, the one I mentioned last week, it's closed now. I didn't know it was closed till Jody told me, but um, it's a, it's a, a MBA program by uh, Chris Arun called um, Arun Educational Ventures. It's an MBA program. You, you can, it's a one year program. You can finish it within it's all self-paced mainly, but you can finish it. He has, he meets every week, uh, about three times a week. He has an open class on Thursday where you do a question and answer for the public on Thursdays, every Thursday around, um, what is it? I don't remember what time it is. I don't know, maybe I think it's around 11 or one o'clock, something like that, because he's, he, he's on the West Coast. <clears throat> he's on Pacific time. Mm -hmm. But he has a Q and A for the general public and everybody, and then he has Q and A for um, MBA members. Depends on what level you signed up on. And then he has the normal class hours on Tuesday, on Monday and Tuesdays. But um, it great, good class, good guy, like down to earth guy. Cool. But um, yeah. But very, very heavily, because a lot of the programs I looked at didn't have all the information and education that I was looking for, that I was was hoping to, to have, that he covers that plus, plus more. And his whole thing really is about marketing and networking. That's mainly his focus. Your net worth is about, is, is your, uh, what's the saying? Network. Your net worth is your network. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've got a brother who, you know, he's only a couple of years younger than me, but I've always said for probably the last 20 years almost that uh, he has a million dollar network and I've watched him use it. And I'll tell you what, it's been worth millions mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 the, and it comes from basically he never throws anybody away. You know, he's been collecting people and friends and contacts and associates and stuff for, you know, decades since he first started his professional career out of college. And he's got contacts that go all the way back for 35 years. Wow. And, uh, and that's why I say he's got a million dollar network because a lot of these people he can call up. They remember him. They know him. They've worked with him. You know, they they like him and, you know, he, he obviously gives freely of his time and effort, but they give freely of theirs. And I'll tell you what, it's translated into millions of dollars to him. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing I liked about. I, that's the reason why I purchased uh, Grant Cardone's marketing program, because, you know, he's like the. The ultimate. Um, what do you call the. Um, crowdfunding expert mm -hmm. yeah because he his network and his all of his money most of his money that's where he raised he can he can raise like 50 million dollars in the drop of a hat from all the network all the connections and networking he's accumulated over the years from social media mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean he's like the guy mm -hmm. nobody's ever raised as much money as he's had through social media than him. Cool. All right. Yep. I'm thinking we'll wrap this up. Does anybody have any other questions or comments or good jokes before we do? <laughs>
going, going, going. Okay. Once. <laughs> Brandon, it was great having you here tonight. Um, look forward to meeting you soon. And uh, we'll uh, call it a night. All right. We'll see you, Thanks, everybody. Take Thank care. you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.